All right. I know what you're thinking. Where is Bill and what have they done with him? Why is this CB thing, CB, on his workbench? What's going on here? Well, let me try to explain. So it all started when I hooked up the uh, the 1510 uh, homebrew direct conversion SSB transceiver and started getting involved in 10 meters. And I really started to like it. I like 10 meters. Then the other day, I worked a station on 10 meters. A local guy, Bill, uh, AF4LL, known locally as Mr. 10 Meters. And he was running a converted CB rig, a CB rig that he had converted to, uh, to 10 meters. Now he was running an SSB rig, but I remembered after talking to him that I had a, a CB rig that I picked up for probably for parts purposes at a ham fest, probably many years ago. It's been sitting in my junk box all this time. It's this old General Electric rig. And I just pulled it out of the junk box and started looking at it. The first thing I discovered was that it's an AM rig. It's not an SSB rig, so it's much simpler. And um, I started thinking, though, that maybe I could convert it so that it would transmit on what is the de facto AM frequency on 10 meters. Because I've also been hearing guys talking, dedicated AMers, talking about making contacts on 10 meter AM. 10 meter AM activity goes from about 29 megahertz, which is the calling frequency, up to about 29.1. So I started thinking about how to convert this thing. Um, now, I opened it up and took a look at it. And when I looked inside, I liked what I saw. Let me show you guys what I'm talking about here. Look, I'm gonna zoom in here. This guy's told me I should zoom. I'm zooming. Look at that. This is really pretty cool construction. It's all on one PC board. Let me get my pointer here. One PC board, I like that. Discrete transistors for the most part. There's a few ICs in here. Look, they've even got shielding for the low pass filter right there. They've got audio transformers, modulation transformers, discrete transistors, and these little uh, Japanese uh, transformers and coils all the way through. Now there's one kind of digital section and that's over here. That's the, uh, the PLL, the phase lock loop circuitry here. And that's a little bit different. That's a little bit digital and kind of, well, I don't know, kind of, uh, kind of fancy for me. But there it is. So then I started. Let me let me take a look. At, look at the other side of the board. That's pretty. It's pretty accessible and understandable. Anyway, the construction is kind of nice. The other thing I discovered that this this rig probably dates from probably the mid-1970s. And this particular board here shows up in many, many uh, of the 40-channel AM CB rigs of the era. So if you become familiar with what's going on in this circuitry, you, you're really basically dominating or, or understanding the circuitry in all of the uh, kind of the related related rigs. Now, I started poking around the internet and I discovered a couple of things. First, I discovered that the documentation available for these CB rigs is far inferior to the kind of documentation that we're used to finding for ham radio gear. If you go try and look for the manual for a Heathkit HW101 or DX100 or a Halicrafters S30AE, you'll find all kinds of good documentation. Not really quite true for the CB rigs, and this is a function of the fact that most of the CBers were not really cracking these things open and working on the circuitry or, or even trying to understand it. But there is some information out there. The first thing I needed to go, uh, get an understanding of is sort of the block diagram how this works. And I found this one here, which is pretty good. Um, the equivalent PLL synthesizer. And it describes how the PLL synthesizer and treats the PLL as a black box I discovered that the crystals that I had in here, 10.240, and another crystal at 10.695 or so, were um, 
uh, kind of the same ones that I had in this receiver. So I knew this was the, the equivalent circuit. And then I poked around a little bit more and I discovered that there were some guys who were trying to convert this by coming up with kind of a replacement oscillator at some point, but it really didn't work because of the unique kind of scheme that they had here. So look, there's a, an article here about the equivalent PLL synthesizer circuit. Pretty good how they do that. Um, I found the, the circuit diagram, which is a lot better online than it is in the print version. When I printed it out, it's kind of not too good. Um, and then I found um, some a couple of threads where Arnie was uh, a fellow named Arnie. I got his call sign here. Hold on. W1GCI was attempting to kind of replace the uh, the reference oscillator so that he could put this thing on 10 meter AM also. But he, it didn't look to me like he was able to do it. He was talking and thinking about building kind of an outboard oscillator for it. Later on, I found a website with a guy who was uh, giving instructions on how to how to really how to kind of modify this thing through the through a modification of the PLL circuit so that it would um, function on 10 meters without having to build any kind of external uh, operate on 10 meter AM on the AM frequencies of 29.0 to say 29.4 without having to modify or build any kind of external oscillator. And he did it by just playing around with the PLL circuitry. Now take a look what he he published on the internet. And I'm going to I'm going to have to get his call sign and, and name and all that and put it up on the uh, on the page here. But look, you could see look, there's the PLL circuit that he published. There's the one that's in my rig. And he modified the whole thing by making a couple of cuts in the P in the traces on the PLL board. Cuts that I have done here with mine. I've made the same kind of cuts that he called for. And then he puts two lines in to patch, right? And I I did this the same thing on mine. I put the the lines in there. And actually the lines are on the other side here. You could see this is a better representation. You could see over here. Let me move this over so you guys can see it. Okay. Let's see. You, it's hard to kind of hard to see. They're kind of in blue down here. Well, I, I'm not going to have enough space to look here. Look, so I put the blue lines in here. One, two, just the same as the lines that he put in here. One and two. All right, let me zoom out a little bit. It might make it a little bit better. A little bit better. So you can see them. See them both here. Up here a little bit. All right, there we go. So anyway, I put those in there, and I was able to get the thing to peak up on both receive and transmit on 10 meter AM, which was really pretty cool. And I actually heard some ham QSOs on uh, ham contacts on the 10 meter calling frequency around 29.0, which was kind of a, a nice moment for me. But uh, then huh, uh, a tragedy struck and this is where I decide I, I, I let my kind of desire to peak and tweak get the better of me. So inside this rig, after you do the PLL mod, what you have to do is you have to retune a lot of the tuned circuits to get yourself off of the 11 meter band and onto the 10 meter band. So that involves a lot of peaking and tweaking of these little kind of square transformers and coils in here, and also the low pass filter. So I tried to do this and I did not pay any attention to the very good advice that they gave in the, uh, in, the, in the articles about this. For example, they said that you should only do this if you have the proper tools, the proper tools, the proper swizzle sticks to move these transformers and coils. And I did not have them, all right? So what I had to do was I just, I decided I was gonna get impatient. I wasn't gonna order them. I was just gonna try to wing it, you know, and use some little screwdrivers and stuff like that. Very bad move, bad move, because these transformers, I think they were fragile 
when they were first used, but over time, the ferrite material inside became even more fragile. So if you don't use the proper tool, and even if you do have the proper tool, and you apply too much pressure, you can break the ferrite cores in these things, which I did on my second round of peaking and tweaking. So I broke the core here on T2, right? There's T2, that's where it goes, right there, right? So I broke the core on T2, and this was like kind of a sad moment because I could no longer receive good signals on 10 meter AM. But I decided that I wasn't going to be deterred by this. So I went out on eBay and I found uh, two or three uh, transceivers that sort of looked like this one, this one that I'm working on, that, that seemed it would have the same kind of PLL structure and the same basic board pattern that I had on this one. And I ordered them. They're supposed to arrive tomorrow. I also ordered from Amazon uh, what I hope will be a proper set of tuning sticks. So I don't have to repeat my sad experience of cracking the ferrite cores inside um, the rig. I've already extracted T2, which came out pretty easily. And hopefully one of the other rigs will have a T2 in it that I could just pop out and use it as a parts rig and put it back, put it back in there. And then hopefully Bob will be my uncle and I will be on uh, 10 meter AM. Now there's an advantage of buying two or three of these things because there's a possibility that I'll get all three of them working or at least two of them working, in which case I can give one of them to another local ham and we can get on, on 10 meter AM. Woohoo! So anyway, that's the way this project is going, and that explains why I have been playing around with the chicken band radio, CB. Look at that. It's even got CB. You can throw the switch and go on PA, <laughs> a public address system. You yell, you yell nonsense. It's got a mod light. It's even got a special number here where you can go to channel 9. ooh -wee. And look, mic, it's got a mic power amp and ANL built in. This is a General Electric. It used to have a little, little, little thing that they glued on here. It said General Electric. This is the, um, the model number here, the General Electric model number N038584D. And that's the one I'm working on. But anyway, I kind of like the, I like the construction. I like the, uh, kind of the, the, the super head architecture. The PLL thing is kind of weird, but it provides an opportunity to do the frequency change that'll get you on 10 meter AM. So the radios, the replacement radios and the uh, replacement proper st swizzle sticks are arriving tomorrow. And I'll do another video, hopefully, when I have this one or one of the others on uh, 10 meter AM. I also think, even though this thing puts out only about four watts, I think that I could possibly hook it up to the EB63A amplifier that I have here and run it at higher power levels on uh, 10 meter AM just for just for kicks. I have a 10 meter element up on the um, K4KIO hex beam, so uh, it should be should be interesting. Anyway, it's been a little bit of a diversion here, uh, a little bit of something different, and I have to say I I, I kind of like the the internal construction of the uh, the very simple uh, CB rig, even if it is a CB rig. All right, that's all for now. I'll I'll kind of continue this in the next in the next video once the the replace the parts rigs and the the new swizzle sticks arrive. Seven three from Northern Virginia.